The Supreme Court's ruling in the 2003 case, uh, Grutter versus Bollinger, Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, now long retired, but she wrote for the majority in that case, quote, the court expects that 25 years from now, the use of racial preferences will no longer be necessary. Now that we're more than halfway through that 25 year period, do you see any sign that universities are backing away from the use of racial preferences? No, they're fighting tooth and nail to preserve this. Uh, they, they, the, the presidents want to feel noblesse oblige that but for their racial preferences, you know, they wouldn't look out over their marvelously diverse realm. It makes them feel superior to redneck America, that they believe it's composed exclusively of deplorable bigots. And the sad fact is, is that the driving force behind all of this, which is the academic skills gap between blacks and whites, has not closed. The average black 12th grader still reads at the level of the average white 8th grader. That is really a problem, Peter. And, uh, but the solution is not preferences in college. There's got to be a cultural revolution uh, in the black home that puts a priority on education that we see with Asians. They're whooping everybody's ass because they are so single-mindedly focused on academic accomplishment. Actually, use that. I didn't write it down, but you have in the book I'll remind you, and then you take us through it. The mind experiment, uh -huh, the mental, right, the thought exactly. experiment, rather. G g give us that thought experiment. Well, you know, this is the claim that everything we see today, every racial disparity is the result of discrimination. That's the, the left, left wing explanation for all things in the world is structural inequalities are a result of structural racism. The conservative view, in my experience, is more likely to say, behavioral choices, personal responsibility. So I pose this thought experiment. If for 10 years, blacks acted like Asians in all things relevant to both academic and economic success, starting at a young age forward, if, if black children attended school, now the fluency rate is five times higher for blacks and for whites, attended school at the same rate of Asians, studied at the same rate of Asians, did not have children out of wedlock, waited until they were married before having children, the did not get involved in gangs, crimes, drugs, so they looked, they acted like Asians in all things. If after 10 years of that, we still saw the racial disparities that we do, then it is time to look for a structural inequality, to look for a ubiquitous racism explanation. But right now, when the behavioral disparities are so glaring and so obvious, it is woefully premature to say that what's going on here is implicit bias or explicit bias.